Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Zerman, Senior Director of Client Content and Strategy at Becker's Hospital Review. Thank you for tuning into the Becker's Healthcare Podcast Series. Today, I am pleased to be joined by Stephanie Rickard, Enterprise Revenue Cycle Director, Trizetto Provider Solutions. Stephanie has been a part of the healthcare revenue cycle industry with Trizetto Provider Solutions, a cognizant company, for 10 years and is in her seventh year as Enterprise Revenue Cycle Director. As an experienced and enthusiastic professional, Stephanie's extensive knowledge and passion for this ever-changing industry fuels her continued success and desire to increase revenue for her clients. By leveraging her optimization-oriented skill set, Stephanie works with clients to create efficiencies and reduce costs through automation-enabled platforms and services. If her clients are successful, she's successful. Stephanie, thanks for being here. Hi, Brian. Thanks for having me. Great. So, so let's dive into the first question I have here, which, you know, why are payer payments such a chronic problem for health systems? And what can leaders really do to, to address this challenge? Sure, sure. Yeah, there are actual multiple reasons why underpayments are so problematic for health systems. First is because as a general consensus, our systems have not yet adopted a true revenue integrity strategy. We know that our healthcare payers are underpaying up to 10% of claims, especially those in the rising managed care divisions, which accounts for tens of millions of dollars annually. Additionally, with denials on the rise by 58% and 65% of those denials being written off, leaders must allocate their resources to working these unreimbursed work queues. With the current revenue and staffing strains that our systems are experiencing, these zero balanced out accounts have been placed on the back burner. There's no audits that are occurring on those specific work queues. Another reason why underpayments are problematic is because they're extremely difficult to accurately identify, which is the operative word there. Revenue cycle staff will do their best to identify large payment errors using spreadsheets, comparing them against manual contract reviews, but they aren't capturing even a fraction of the disputed payments using this methodology. There are multiple data elements that must be incorporated into the audit to ensure accuracy. And without the use of technology to automate this entire process, staff would be required to understand hundreds of fee schedules and millions of payer pricing rules. And this painfully tedious process is also extremely expensive at $25 per professional appeal and over $100 for the hospital. Lastly, in addition to auditing claims for underpayments, contract compliance platforms are also used to catch erroneous payment denials. These edit denials, we call them, are hardly ever considered and are nearly impossible to identify manually. So just as a payer is not perfect and may reimburse the incorrect amount, they very well may apply the wrong pricing rules and logic during the adjudication process. And those need to be reconciled as well as they've received zero reimbursement to date. But fortunately, there are many ROI generating solutions and services out there that can assist our revenue cycle leaders in capturing these at-risk funds. Even with budget constraints, our leaders must continue to drive the digital transformation strategy within their organizations. So then thinking about these, these solutions, you know, what, what characteristics and functionalities are really important to consider um, you know, when, when evaluating a contract compliance platform? Sure, sure. So as I briefly mentioned above, there are multiple data elements that need to be incorporated into the audit process to ensure accuracy. So you want to look at a technology that truly replicates the claim adjudication process. First overall requirement would be to ensure that the platform operates in real time, continuously auto-updating and reprocessing, ensuring that all of your reports are 100% accurate. This would include a real-time data feed of the claim and remit files, those 837 and 835 files. And then the technology should audit each unique claim line scenario against the payer-specific fee schedule and all of those pricing rules. And we're not making any assumptions based on historical data. This is all, all automated and all logic that is built into the system for each individual scenario. Second, you want to look for a partner that has an experienced implementation and service delivery team. In order to audit a claim and a remit successfully, the payer contract needs to be loaded and it needs to be built into the system. And in my client discussion, the need to build and load all of these contracts, which means a clear understanding of all of the pricing rules, 
the number one reason why a contract compliance platform has not yet been implemented. So ensure your prospective partners have ample expertise and resources to assist you with building and optimizing your payer contracts. And lastly, look for a solution that assists with appeal form management or provides custom appeal scenarios. Many payers are loosening their policies and are now allowing for more streamlined appeal submissions, like Excel spreadsheets or PDF uploads into the website or email submission. So your contract compliance platform should eliminate all data entry, pre-populating all required documentation, including those attachments if necessary, and ultimately streamlining both the appeal submission and full recovery process. Thank you so much for laying all that out, Stephanie. I want to zero in here on the, the appeals portion of this. So as it would pertain to sort of a successful recovery, what would you consider as one of the most important parts of the appeal process? The first item that really stands out is the need for payer relationships. So uh, despite what we all want to believe about our payers, I do believe that they do really want to enhance both the provider and the member experience. So by picking up the phone and calling your payer, you can establish a relationship or work with a partner who has these relationships established. So you can create a custom appeal and custom recovery strategy for both you and your payer because the requirements, the data requirements those are going to be different. This designated contact at the payer will also not, will not only streamline the submission process, but will also make the payer follow-up diligence that much more streamlined as well. Additionally, when considering the appeal process, you need to understand the root cause analysis of the underpayment. That is critical so you can report holistically on payment trends of that specific scenario. By doing so, in preparing a list of CPT payment trends, you can submit a larger quantity of claims for redetermination, increasing reimbursement that much more. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, I, you know, I think it's been a pleasure speaking to you and I've learned a lot a bit just about the appeals process and all this, this struggle, you know, we hear about underpayments all the time, but you're digging in and seeing how what health systems can do about it is very useful. Is there anything else you'd like to add that, that we haven't covered so far? The biggest thing for me to reiterate right now is the need to adopt technology. Um, my past 10 years, I've heard continuously that systems don't have the budget to pay for these solutions, that they're luxury solutions. But we have to remember to conduct our ROIs, do our analysis, review the staffing requirements for these manual workflows. In, in some of my recent analysis, I've performed 18 and 30 to 66 to 1 ROIs when you look at the cost of technology versus what it's recovering. And so additionally, with the amount of uncompensated care rising at over $40 billion annually, um, you know, there are a shortage of resources. And uh, that should no longer be, though, an excuse for letting millions of dollars expire. There are partners out there that can provide you with ROI generating technology, coupled with analysts and experts for the contracts to get loaded. And this contract compliance technology is no longer a luxury item. It is an absolute requirement to, in order to ensure that your system realizes every dollar of revenue that's owed to you from those payers. It's to the point where in order to reach maximum operational maturity, adoption of technology is required. Helpful, helpful to understand there too. You just, I know a lot of folks are, are working for organizations that are kind of strapped right now, uh, but just to know that uh, working with this kind of technology is feasible. Some of those, those ROI numbers you shared are really impressive. So Stephanie, really, really appreciate you taking the time today. I also want to thank our podcast sponsor, Cognizant. Listeners, you can tune into more podcasts from Becker's Healthcare by visiting our podcast page at beckershospitalreview.com.